Hello everyone, and welcome back to my video series about a low-level account that I'm making to do well in Grand Arena. Today I want to talk about gear, and especially about the efficient acquisition of gear. I want to talk about how I see especially the difficult pieces, which ones we want to buy out of the shop, which ones we want to farm for, and how we're going to get through the difficult parts of having everybody needing the same gear. So, in, in my opinion, there's uh, a lot of information out there. And a lot of people have done a lot of work to put together guides. And if you want to use those guides, get out there, look them up, see what other people have to say. It's very interesting. I've seen a lot of people go with a, a best price strategy where every piece of gear is labeled according to how many gems it costs, what a gem is worth. And it's all correlated in a way where you can see for each piece of gear uh, what is the lowest cost way to acquire that gear. The problem is there there is some gear that you're only going to get from raids events or shops and the method doesn't really tell us what we get from a node when we farm it just tells us what the most efficient is efficient way is to get pieces of one specific type of gear so it doesn't tell the whole story and i think that leads to a lot of inefficiency in the way people view it and the way they farm their gear i've also heard frequently that people use a low energy strategy. So if I could get a particular piece of gear off of a node that costs six energy or eight energy or 10 energy, I'm gonna pick the six energy node because I can farm that the most times and get the most pieces of gear for the same amount of energy. And that is true. But still, it's not telling the whole story about what you're giving up by not going for a harder node. And uh, to talk about that, I'm going to use an example of this uh, Cenar Hollow Projector. So it does come off of a 6A normal node, and that node takes 8 energy. So if we used an example where we took 1,000 energy, and we spent every bit of it just farming this one node, you would use 1,000 energy, and you would get 125 battles out of that. There's about a 25% a 20% drop rate on the gear that we want. So we would get uh, 25 of the Mark III hollow projectors. We would also get uh, some minor gear with uh, Mark VI data pads and some Mark VI Blast Tech prototypes. And that all can be used uh, later on uh, in some way to make parts for Relic. So it's not a waste of stuff to get that. You also get a bunch of one and two star droids your total credit haul would be 86,250. You get 28,750 shipbuilding materials, 1,000 experience, and 13 sim tickets. So, what would we call priority gear? We would say, well, this projector, right? We got a full projector plus five more pieces out of that, um, and that's what we were looking for, so we're happy with that. Now, if we look at another node, 9F on light side normal, that's a 10 energy node, and we can farm these same hollow projectors. Out of uh, 1,000 energy, now we only get 100 battles instead of 125, so the amount of battles has gone down. But there's three pieces of premium gear that we're going to get out of here. We're going to get those hollow projectors, and we're going to get 20 of them, so we're going to still be able to make 20 uh, for a full piece. Uh, we won't get 25, but we'll still get 20. We'll also get 20 of these Mark 8 golden eyeballs that we need for a bunch of different stuff and the uh, mark 12 bayonet which is part of gear 13 now you're never going to be sorry that you farmed up some gear 13 stuff uh, if you ever find yourself with way too many bayonets that would be pretty unusual some characters going to need them sooner or later so it's not bad to have those you also get um, two more pieces of, of minor gear um, and for the droids you get one two and three star droids uh, for the credits, you get 138,000 credits. That's 60% more money. So two-thirds more money by farming this, this node, and it's only five less of the projectors. So it, it's really a big difference in money. Uh, same thing with ship credits, 50,000 ship materials out of that, which is 75% more than we got in the previous node, the 1,200 experience which I think is a little less. We got 1,300 on the other, no, we got 1,000, so we're getting 200 more experience also, and a few less sim tickets. 
So overall, if you take the whole haul, everything that we got from, from running these runs, um, the, the account benefited a lot more by running this harder node on 9F and spending 10 energy. Now, if I was just, what is the fastest way that I could get that hollow projector? Yeah, maybe it's important to me to only use the eight energy, but uh, by upgrading to 10 energy, look, look at how much more stuff I get. And the moral of the story is I like credits. You know, I, I can't pass up the fact that this has, uh, you know, an additional uh, 60,000 credits or something coming out of it. And that's a lot, and it builds up over time. Um, this projector also comes off of a fleet node. So if we look at the fleet node, 1,000 energy, 125 battles. Again, you get 25 projectors, some minor stuff, ship droids, and the same amount of money and uh, shipbuilding materials that you would get out of the 8-cost regular node for, for regular energy. So there we've gone through three options. Uh, the fleet option is similar to the, the regular energy option. And the, the moral of the story is that I, I love the credits, right? So if I have to farm these, I, w I want to do it through the highest node. Even though I get less of the actual piece, uh, you know, I get, I get 60 premium pieces as compared to 25 premium pieces and a bunch more stuff. And if we have the fleet energy and we just say, well, okay, I'm, I'm not doing something with my fleet energy today. I might as well use that to scoop up that projector. That's fine. You know, it's not bad to use the lower energy nodes. But if I'm going after it, I'm going to go after it on the higher nodes and get all that extra money in and everything that comes with it. Uh, there's four pieces of gear. There may be more. I mean, I, I don't know everything about the game, but there's four that I can think about that uh, you pretty much only get from raids. And if you look in the game, you're not going to find these pieces of gear uh, laying around somewhere for you to farm. So these Mark V droid callers, this is the reason to save money. So in, in a previous video, I said for, for guild currency, I was going to save it until I had at least 1500 before I bought any Stark Shards. Um, the reason I want to do that, I always want to have money in the bank. So every single time that these pop up in any store ever, anywhere, I'm going to be able to grab them. I'm going to be able to grab them out of the guild store. I'm going to be able to grab them out of the guild event currency store. I'll be able to grab them off of... I'll be able to grab them off of the uh, shard store if there's uh, uh, the ability to grab them out of there. So I'm going to save currency. Now, once I get over a certain amount, I can buy other stuff. But, but man, this, this thing, you're going to need this for a lot of characters all over the place, gear 12. You need so many of these, and you're not going to get enough of them out of raids. Uh, you can't wait for them. So this is the reason to save shop money and and you know, say, I'm going to buy other gear when I'm over 1500 For this uh, middle gear, the Mark V Furnace and the Mark VI Nubian Disc, um, early game, they're a problem. Later in the game, you'll build up enough of them that it'll be okay. Th these aren't needed on quite as many characters or as in, in as many places. But early game, uh, one, this is the stuff you're going to buy when you get to 1500 credits. Um, the Nubian Scanner, uh, I don't remember having a problem with these the first time around. I can't imagine that, I can imagine that early game, uh, similarly, um, when you need them, we're gonna have to save currency and find those out of the shop because I, don't, I just don't think the raids are gonna give them to us fast enough. When we talk about bottleneck gear in, in terms of production, um, bottleneck is a term that, that's used to describe the area of the process where everything is held up. So. Everything can go, you think about a bottle, right? So you turn a bottle upside down and the liquid can only flow out as fast as the size of the neck of the bottle. And that's basically what you're seeing with characters in Galaxy of Heroes as well. If stun guns is your bottleneck, you have 18 characters with plenty of stuff and no stun guns, and the stun gun becomes your bottleneck, and that's all you can do is just sit there uh, farming, fun, farming the stun guns, and every time somebody gets past a stun gun, they level right up to where they need another stun gun and that's very frustrating um, but if you know that these are the bottlenecks from the very start of the game and you pay attention to these and, and you have a plan for how you're going to get these bottleneck resources that's going to help you level up your characters so there's four pieces that I just don't intend to farm um, for this mark 
8 Biotech. Uh, when you look at the farm notes for this, maybe it's just me, but I do not like any of the farm notes. There's even a fleet node hard that has this as the drop. But, uh, you know, spend 100 fleet currency and you might get one or two of them. It's, it's very frustrating trying to farm this piece. So, again, if you go out and you look at the guides for where to get gear, you'll find out that this piece is very inefficient cost-wise to buy out of a shop. But I'm going to buy it out of a shop because I do not want to farm it. There is so much other stuff with good nodes that I want to farm. I just don't want to farm it. This uh, Mark 9 Cryotech computer, uh, the Grand Arena store has these, and it has them at a good value. So once you start getting Grand Arena currency, I almost exclusively just use that currency to buy these. And um, I don't usually have a problem with them. I don't ever need to farm them. Um, I occasionally use the Grand Arena currency for something else, but mainly just this. And that way I don't have to, don't have to farm them. These Mark III projectors, again, by my calculations, it's 300 gems to buy one of these out of a shop. And uh, there's, there's really no way, even with the discussion that I had before showing you the, the value of the nodes, this particular piece of equipment for as many refreshes as you have to do to get it, it buying it out of the shop is just more efficient. So uh, what I do is when I need one of these, I often save up credits and just spend uh, 300 or sometimes they have 600 credits for two of them in the shop and I just I buy a couple of them out of the shop. Um, you need a lot of them so if you buy two when you need one it's not a waste if you have the credits. And then this Mark V droid caller as we just discussed you know you gotta get that out of the shop. This is a bottleneck resource uh, even as far as the game as I am with my main account still need tons of those things so uh, just, just plan to be shopping for those for a long time. Uh, three pieces of gear that I consider to be on permafarm the Mark V stun guns, I, buy, uh, I farm those off of 8B normal on the dark side. You know, good luck. <laughs> you, can, you can camp that and just spend energy there for, for a month, and um, uh, you, you, know, you won't regret having too many stun guns. You, you'll never be able to keep up with how many of these things you need. The stun cuffs, I farm them off of 8D hard on the light side. Um, there's some hard nodes that I consider farm nodes, and this particular one has Django Fett and Hound's Tooth. So even if you have Django Fett at seven stars, Hound's Tooth seven stars maxed out, you can hit this node, you get those shards, the extra shards get converted into currency for the shard shop, which you can use to purchase these exact items that you're trying to farm, and you get these Zerka stun cuffs. So um, there's a couple hard nodes that I'm not afraid to hit routinely um, on my main account. And for a, for a mid-game account, I, I think that there's one or two of these nodes. If you are really, you know, need like five sets of Zerka stun cuffs, hit this Django shard or Django node every single day and just get the shards, get the stun guns, get the extra money that comes out of there, and, uh, and you can cash in and, and get the gear that you need while also getting um, stun guns or stun cuffs. Now, obviously you can only do that five times a day, so you're going to do that first and then 8G normal to get more stun cuffs if that's what you need. For the Carbantes, 8C hard on the light side, has two characters, Carbanti, Tunnel Loot, again, same kind of thing. If you're just trying to hunt Carbantes, hit that node first and then 8F on the light side is the best normal node. Um, and it also has some stuff that gets broken down for bronzium wiring. Now, I don't know how everybody else does with relics, but bronzium wiring is, is the bottleneck resource for me in, uh, in developing my relic stuff. So I'm always looking to get things that uh, have something that breaks down for bronzium wiring as a bonus. Uh, so that's these items are a priority on the shop. So again, if you're buying this material out of the shop and there's none of it, in the store that you can see and you have currency to spend and any of these things are available grab them so that's your second priority out of the shop and then for the rest of the bottleneck gear I, I want to do this in terms of what I consider to be the best nodes in the game best nodes in the game so 
Anytime you have extra energy and you think, man, I don't know where to throw this, um, best notes. The best hard node in the game, to me, 3A dark side, low level node. It has the Mark III detonator. You need these things 40 at a time for high level gear. And these things pop up all over the place and you'll need 40 of them. And you'll think, man, I gotta go back to farming blue gear for a while now. And it's, uh, it is painful when you wanna be farming your high level gear to go back and farm these uh, Mark III detonators. But if you just hit this hard node, um, I, I hit it every day. So on, on my, um, my main account, that's a node that I just, I farm five hits out of that every day. And then I always have these detonators. I'm never low on them. Um, it also has uh, stun cuffs for Ugnot armor. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. The best light side node to me is 7B normal. It has the Mark VII Cryotech shock prods. So we talked about buying the computer out of the store. So, so that Mark IX computer often goes together with the uh, other cryotech. Uh, but, but this comes off of a light side node 7B. I love that node. It has the shock prod. It has two gear that break down for bronzium wiring. And it has the Baw armor again for the, for the Ugnon armor. The best dark side node, 9C. I farm this node like crazy. It has these Bactagels, Mark IV Bactagels on it, and it also has Mark XII Cybernetics. And I over farm those and I end up with like 170 Electrium Conductors. Fine, I take them into the uh, salvage and I, that's how I make my Electrium Conductors for the uh, Relic stuff. And then the best fleet node, 3C Normal. It has these Mark XII uh, lenses. And again, if the, you need these all over the place, and if by chance you over farm them, that's where I get my Zen Biddle cards. So these nodes I hit all the time, and I never regret over farming this dark side node, over farming this fleet node. Uh, they, they give good gear, they give stuff that you use, they give money, they give uh, stuff for relics. So to me, those are the four best nodes in the game. Uh, I didn't do best cantina node because we're talking about gear, but I have a favorite over there as well. So the thing with Ugnot, uh, this isn't a mystery. This uh, A lot of people know this. There's information on it that's already out there. People have posted guides. But to make it simple, what you do is you take your Ugnot up to gear 5. I put him at level 41. And if you see this arrow pointing to the orange plus, that means that he's not high enough level. So the upgrade button doesn't show up and I can never accidentally upgrade my Ugnot. So by keeping him low enough level, I, I don't have that problem. And then the three red arrows that are pointing to this gear piece over on the left side, that's the uh, Boss 7 armor. Um, so you set up your Ugnot like this and you just use him to combine those pieces that we talked about earlier and make this Boss 7 armor. You take that into the salvage for the relic and you can see one Baw 7 armor is worth six chromium transistors and therefore you never have an issue with chromium transistors here this this type of material for relics is a non-issue uh, by farming those nodes that I talked about the the hard node with range trooper and uh, the light side 7b uh, those give you materials and then uh, there, there's another node that you farm all the time that gives you the, the last component um, for, the, I, I think it's one of the fleet nodes that gives you the last component for that armor that you'll always have plenty of. So with that, y you, you set yourself up very well. You're farming your gear, you're doing what you need to do, you're hitting those nodes sometimes um, and setting yourself up for relics. So fill gear and last piece. Uh, what I mean by fill gear is anything not on this list. So if it's not gear that you're specifically watching for and buying out of the shops with currency or farming off of those great nodes um, to break your bottlenecks, that's the gear you're just waiting for the game to give you. You're waiting to see it out of a raid. You're waiting to see it out of a maybe even a bronzium shard, a bronzium pack. Uh, you, but you're just, you're just waiting. You're, you're not going to go back and farm those nodes and spend a whole bunch of energy because if you were to do that, you could instead spend the energy on you know node 7b light side and and break the bank you know it's like 
pulling the lever on a slot machine and all kinds of good stuff comes out, right? You, you don't want to be farming uh, trash green gear when you could be spending your energy on stun guns or something that you really need. So sometimes you just you just be patient, wait for that gear to show up. And I, I know sometimes it's going to stink sitting there looking at a character that's so close to leveling up and just, just leave it alone. Um, but sometimes you have to do that. And honestly, when a character is close, there's no harm in finishing out a piece. So if you've got uh, somebody who's just waiting on, I don't know, say Mark VI uh, hypo syringes or something like that, and they need you know six more of those to upgrade their gear, go out and grab those, farm them up. It's you know one day's worth of work, and you're not getting too distracted by it. Uh, I don't pick a character and farm gear by gear by gear by gear until they level up. I never do that. Um, I get the gear pieces that make sense in the right way until the character is close, and then I and then I get it. Um, when a gear when a character is down to their last piece, I will make an effort to get that last piece. So it's a little bit of a chess game, but uh, but early game it happens a lot. Early game you're you're stuck on these gear pieces a lot, so you you kind of have to go out and farm here and there for stuff that that's really not great to be farming. But, uh, but once you get past that, uh, you don't want to have to go back and farm that green gear. Even to the extent that I will go and I will make a guild request for that green piece and have the guild members give it to me instead of having to go back and spend that energy uh, getting green gear. Because I could get the green gear from the guild, and then with my energy instead, I could go hit a Carbonti node, a stun gun node, break the bottleneck. All right. The gear 13 strategy. Now, if you look at the gear pieces uh, on all kinds of characters, typically the left-hand side needs a gold uh, element and a purple element. And the gold element is usually on this side is farmed from uh, regular energy nodes, light side, dark side nodes. And um, if you farm all of those nodes plus all these purple components, it really takes a long time and burns through a lot of energy. Well, so what I do is I farm the gold component because, again, all of those gear 12, gear 13 components, uh, they're coming off of nodes that I want to farm that have a lot of money, a lot of experience, a lot of good stuff that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and farm all of this gold stuff. And then for the purple component, I'm really going to try to buy that from shops. And what you'll find is, is as you get it later on in the game, you're going to have a lot of currency, especially with the shard shop. Um, and you're going to be able to develop currency for the shard shop whenever you want. You just take, save up some guild currency, save, save up some uh, galactic war currency, and then you spend that to buy character shards, and then you use those character shards to give yourself currency in the shard shop. And you'll be able to buy these components at roughly the same rate that you're farming the gear. Um, so it, it, to me, it never holds me up. I'm getting that gear uh, from the shard shop and from the other shops at roughly the same rate that I'm able to farm it. On the right side, uh, there's a lot of stuff on the right side that comes out of fleet. These top two pieces are almost exclusively fleet nodes, which again is fine because they're coming off of the best fleet nodes that are giving us all kinds of stuff that we want, like that piece that we just saw. Uh, the bottom, the, the whatever the energy collector is, uh, that usually is going to be a combination of different energies. Um, <clears throat> so again, you want to spend your fleet energy uh, there and spend your regular energy there where you need to. A lot of times what's holding you up is a chirotech or something like that. So follow the strategies that we talked about before for that. Now this right side usually takes me longer to farm up than the left side. So the fleet energy part of it takes several days longer at least uh, than it does to, to farm up the left hand side. So for that reason, um, I'm, I'm fine with that. While I'm waiting, I'm going to go back, I'm going to hit that you know dark side uh, node, I'm going to hit that light side node, those best nodes in the game. I'm just going to be farming off of them and building up a bank of other stuff that I need or farming other characters uh, at a lower level while I'm waiting on this. Again, we're, we're not going to get impatient and, and try to force all of the fleet stuff uh, to be closed out by buying it out of the stores. We just don't want to buy that gold gear. We want to farm that gold gear.
So highlights. <clears throat> save your gear currency save your currency for the stores the guild store the guild event store grand arena store shard store save that currency buy those priority items especially that mark 5 droid collar and if you get up to 1500 currency in any of those shops then go ahead and start purchasing those other items um, if you don't know where to spend your energy just spend it on those perma farm items you, you might if it's a miracle you say well, I don't need any stun guns anywhere on any character. It's okay. You can farm stun guns. You're never going to regret that. You're going you're gonna to need those again someday soon. You can farm Carbantes. You'll never regret that. Any one of those best nodes in the game, you can farm those. It, it's always going to benefit you in many different ways. Spend your energy there. And then the last highlight, you know, farm gear 13 patiently. I know people want to slam that relic and, and get that character going. And man, sometimes when you're right before a Grand Arena, and you, all you need to do is just spend a little currency or spend a little money and get that character going. You know, that's fine. Go ahead, do that. Uh, but just realize, you know, if you could have waited another week, you probably would have been um, better off in the long run. So one of the big focuses that I have, and again, I, I said I like credits. I like credits. Farming this way gives me plenty of credits. And I'm a main account right now. I'm doing all the same stuff with mods that everybody's doing, switching around mods, working on mods, exploring mods, leveling up. It takes a ton of money to do that. It takes a ton of money to do everything that you want to do. And I have 98 million credits in the bank, no problem. And that's pretty low for me. I usually have around 120 million credits. So the reason I have those credits is because of the way I farm the gear. And, uh, you know, that allows you to do a lot of stuff that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do yeah, in the game. All right. So if we go to the account and we take a look and we say, okay, nice, nice lesson, right? Yeah, let, let's apply it. Let's apply it in the real world to this little account that I'm building and, and see how it all comes together or doesn't come together or, or whatever, however you want to see it. Uh, so if we look at characters... If we take Ahsoka, for example, she has three pieces of gear that she needs. She needs the components for this. She needs a bunch of different stuff for this. She needs basically the whole gear piece. And then she needs this piece. And this is that Mark V furnace that we were talking about. This is only available through raids. So we, we have to wait to get this piece, or we have to save up currency and buy it out of one of the stores. So she's waiting on gear, and there's no reason to focus on this and try to get these gear pieces jammed in there when we know we have to wait on this Mark V piece anyway. So the, Ahsoka is just going to sit. We're not, we're not going to worry about trying to fill in all of her gear. we got to wait until we get this piece from a raid or from the shops or from some other way because we're not going to be able to upgrade her till we get that anyway. So for that reason, when I look at her gear, I'm not interested in, in trying to go out and, and race and find that. Fives needs a stun gun. He's the only character I have right now that needs a stun gun. You'll see I've already got the Carbanti farmed up for it, and I've got 48 more Carbantes uh, shards for the next, uh, for the next Carbanti. So we're, we're okay on Carbantes. The stun guns, we've got 24 out of 50, and that's currently the item that we're farming. So when we do our energy refreshes for the day today, we will be doing it on Carbantes and trying to help Fives get his stun gun. Um, if we don't pay attention to that and we don't farm those bottleneck items and make sure that the people that need the stun gun get the stun gun, um, then <laughs> everybody's going to need a stun gun. Boba Fett may need one too. No, nope, he's just stuck on the same droid collar and Mark V furnace. Um, but if we do get one Mark V furnace, it will go to Ahsoka, and that'll be our trigger to, to get her leveled up. She's a pilot. We're focused on ships early game. I've made a couple other videos about that. So um, she's one of our early pilots, and we've got to keep her going. Okay, so then I want to talk about Kylo. If we look at this piece, he's got this Mark V droid collar finished. And the only way he's got that finished is because I know that I'm looking for this piece out of the shops. 
So I've been focused on that. I've been saving up my uh, guild store currency. And whenever I see these droid callers, I'm grabbing them out of the store. And that's allowed me to get this gear prepared for him ahead of time. So whenever he hits level 74, I'll be able to click that, upgrade him, and he'll be on his way. Genosian Soldier, same way. Uh, this Mark VI Nubian Salvage is also one of those raid only or shop only pieces and I knew to look for it so I scooped up plenty of those and I was able to make this piece and have it waiting he's one of our early pilots so you see these these pilot characters that I'm focused on that I really want to keep them at max gear level I've got them ready to go but that's based on the fact that I know uh, ahead of time what I'm waiting for out of those shops okay if I look down here at Sith Trooper, we've said he's one of our main characters and he's somebody that we really want to get geared up, leveled up, and he's going to be one of the first characters that we try to max out. And you see that he's down here at gear six and held up on one piece. But the piece that he's held up on is this Mark VIII um, weapon mod. And if we look for that Mark VIII weapon mod, here it is in 1B Fleet. Now we're farming Anakin's ship anyway, so we're just waiting for those to come through that. Uh, we've also got a fleet node here, 2D normal, so when we have extra fleet energy right now, we're doing three fleet nodes, and we're doing one energy refresh on fleet. So each day we're doing the clone sergeant, we're doing Anakin's ship, we're doing Sunfax's ship, and uh, once we're done with Clone Sergeant, we'll stop doing him and we'll start doing the Bastila Shan node over in Fleet. So <clears throat> if we have energy, any energy left past those three nodes, we can sync that into this 2D Fleet and, and farm that piece for him. But we're not hard farming it. We're not going to go in there and spend all of our Fleet energy or regular energy on this node. We're not going to come in here and farm it out of these light side uh, nodes over here simply because that energy is reserved for stun guns. It's reserved for carbantes. It's reserved for that bottleneck gear. We're not going to spend it on stuff like this. So that's, that's when I said let the gear come to you. We're already farming a node that's going to help us get that gear with Anakin's ship, so we're going to take it out of there. Now, he's not the only one that needs this piece of gear, right? So he'll get 20 of these and level up, but... That's the same piece that, uh, who is it, Luke Skywalker. He's held up on the exact same piece. So once the Sith Trooper gets it, I'll be waiting on that again for Luke. But I don't have these Soros sub keypads anyway, so there's no reason for me to go out and try to get two of those. i got to let the keypads come. i got to let those um, weapon mods come, and, and we'll get it. We'll, we'll, we'll get it sooner or later. Meanwhile, hard farming on the stun guns. All right. Um, Plo, I think. I'm waiting on Plo for this piece of gear. Now, this has two green pieces in it, and these green pieces can come from uh, the Bronzium cards. You can also farm them in various areas, so lots of places where we can farm this. But there's not anywhere that we're currently farming for anything that that piece comes out of. We're not farming Mon Mothma. We're not, we don't want to spend eight energy on this node that only gives us uh, garbage that we don't want. So how are we going to get this piece? Well, I know that this piece comes out of the shops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the whole piece and see if, hey, look at that. It's in the guild store. You can buy five of them for 150. So remember when I said to save up the currency? In this case, uh, I spent the currency on, on the gear that I was talking about, but this is too good to pass up, right? Because this is going to save me at least at least 10 runs on stuff that I don't want to run. If we go back here and look, we got to get these, and that comes from a run that we don't want to run, and the drop rate's not 100%, so we might have to do 10 runs to get five of those. We might have to do 10 runs to get five of this, right? So you're looking anywhere from, from 10 runs, if everything's perfect, to, to probably more likely 20 different runs 
at six energy each, it's 120 energy, that's a full refresh that we would be wasting chasing gear that we don't want to have to farm. So we go here, 150 currency, gets us five of those, five all at once. So we can just equip, equip that straight away to plow. And we've got more for the next uh, next character that needs it. So that's uh, that's what we do. Okay, so we go to the stores now. Uh, we, we this is gear that we're letting come to us, right? And here it comes. This this gear is coming to us. We got 18 of these. We're probably going to need those somewhere, right? Um, we're not gearing up those two characters, but somebody's going to need this. Here's that hollow projector. We love these. Uh, insufficient credits. I don't have enough credits. <laughs> to spend 2700 that's crazy all right well i'll do my energy refreshes for the day then we're doing two <clears throat> two regular energy refreshes uh, the nodes that we're farming right now we're farming pit to unlock him and we're farming sith trooper all day, every day, until we get him to seven stars. So this has given us some money. And then where did we say we're going to spend the rest of our energy? Right, we're not going to think about this. This is not something we have to debate. We're going to go in here. We're going to pick the stun gun node. We're going to go over to the best node that we have currently open. Now we want to get uh, up to this 8B, but we haven't unlocked that yet. So this is the best node that we got to farm, and we just sink our money into there. And the drop rate's 20%. So out of, you know, what, what was that, 19 runs or whatever we had, uh, three of them, that's uh, a little below average. You know, we should have got four or maybe five. But that's that's the way it goes when you're farming. you got to hit these nodes. you got to hit them a lot and, and farm it up. All right, we got 16K uh, money out of that. So now... Forgot what I was doing back here. Ah, well, we'll get back to it. Oh, we were buying shipments. That's what we were doing. We were buying these hollow projectors. Okay, we got that. All right, now, I've got Ahsoka Tano up to seven stars. So let's say, for instance, there was something in the shard store that I really wanted today, and I had 400 of this uh, cantina currency. I could come back here and just buy Ahsoka Tano, get those 10 extra shards, take them over to the uh, shard shop and buy what I want. We spent all of our money here. Um, there's not something else that we would have wanted out of here anyway. And we'll just go back to saving money uh, on that. This currency, I've been buying the ships that I want. This currency, I'm saving when I, when I see Sunfac or his ship. But I see Sunfac and his ship all the time, so I'm out of that currency all the time. Um, and then in the shard shop, you see I got... A little bit of currency here. The stun cuff is something that I would want to buy. It's 372 for six of them. The problem is I don't have enough in my bank to go for my secondary items. So I need to save up enough in this bank to make sure that I'm only buying the, the, the Mark V droid collars if I can uh, or something like that out of this shop. I want to buy the, the rarest things, put some in the bank, and then when I have enough in the bank, I would I would buy those stun cuffs. So that's a little bit how the, the gear strategy actually applies to, to the account that I'm playing right now. Um, I'll end the video here for the day. Thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this stuff, please give me a like, subscribe, uh, help me out. Thanks.